Zassi, Councilman Cuesta, Councilman Jackers, Councilman Groba, Councilman Gonzalez, Councilman Sedenia, Councilman Coleman, Councilman Mazza, President Keene. This is a regular meeting of the City Council as incorporated in the annual meeting notice of 2011. It was filed in the City Clerk's Office and posted on the bulletin board on December 28, 2010. And sent to the Star Ledger and Home News Review in compliance with the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Law of New Jersey. We will be led in prayer and pledge of allegiance by Council of Almighty God, as a legislator of our community, and strong sense of justice and fair play permeate all we do. Above all, may we seek out your holy will. Give us the strength to follow it, regardless of all human considerations. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Council, let me do so at this time. Any other taxpayer or resident who wishes to address City Council, let me do so at this time. Please give your name and your address. Good evening, year 1405, I'm in Tanaviu, in Burlington, New Jersey. Good evening. Yes, go ahead. Dear City Council, my name is Ruben Pierre, and I was born in I am the owner of a staffing agency called the Rescue Staffing Agency, located in Burlington, New Jersey. I am a member of the People Organization for Progress, Operation Saving Lives, Medical Mission Aid. Please allow me the pleasure of telling you about the Operation Saving Lives, which was started by James Kerry and Stephanie Fletcher in January 2011 when she made a necessary plea for assistance because the people who were dying were on us in Colorado. It's hard to believe that one pack, one pack, <laughs> one pack of this uh, 50 cent sachet of salt actually saves someone, someone's life dying from Colorado. However, organization has saved thousands of lives because we have raised over $18,000 since January to send much more needed ORS salt to Stephanie Lee. However, what if Stephanie Lee appealed to James for assistance? Haley would have a cholera death rate of 10,000 instead of 5,322 in county. Nevertheless, it shouldn't be organizational responsibility provide the salt and about it to the many thousands who are still suffering today. In closing, I appeal to this government body to use the legislative power and therefore President Bill Clinton and the US government to fulfill the promise and give my people the aid they need now. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I'd like to recognize Councilman Patricia Brooklyn's address here. I'm sorry, Councilman, I didn't know you earlier. I mean, I did know you, but I forgot. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any taxpayer resident who wishes to address the council and do so at this time? Please provide your name and your, and your address for the record, please. Good evening. My name is Sandra Hayward. I live at 962 Grove Street, Irvington, New Jersey. Uh, good evening, members of the Elizabeth City Council. I'm here from the People's Organization for Progress on Operation Saving Lives as a member of Mission in Haiti. Uh, let me indulge in a letter from one of the students. She's from Ecuador. Her name is Anna. And her letter states, I am here in Haiti with this fantastic nurse named Stephanie Fletcher. I plan to bring medicine to treat cholera in the rural areas of Haiti. We are trying to reach the regions that have no hospitals or cholera stations. During our first tour around Port-au-Prince, I saw real faces of poverty, people living in tents, piles of garbage on every corner and rubble from the shattered buildings as a result of the earthquake. We have, you have probably heard this description of Haiti before or won't 
or if not, this won't be the last time. However, to witness her in person is mesmerizing. There are no adjectives to describe the misery I saw firsthand. There is something wrong about seeing misery become a lifestyle. My elected officials, I ask where is humanity? Why aren't we taking care of our brothers and sisters in Haiti? There are no cultural barriers. We are all from the human race. It's understandable to feel hopeless and useless when we see a, strength, a strong degree of poverty. However, it is existent. While we are driving around the Port of Prince, I saw five people, two women and three men, picking up huge pieces of cement slack with their bare hands. I asked myself, why would they pick up large pieces of stone with their bare hands when there is so much around? Well, I was told by one of the ladies to pick up one stone at a time makes a big difference. That's when I came to the realization that Haitian people make no excuses for their situation. They just work hard to make it better, and that is what we have to do as citizens of the world. Hope is not lost. Haiti's heart still beating louder than ever. The people are ready for change. However, I am asking that we keep our promise that made that we made to Haiti. Let us hold our brothers and sisters' hands when they need us the most. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Is there any other taxpayer or resident who wishes to address the council when we do so at this time? Please provide your name and address for the record. Sure. Legal members of the council, my name is James Carey. I'm the chairman of the Lutheran Branch of People's Organization of Progress, also a member of Operation Save Lives, and a resident of Elizabeth. I know that some of you probably are wondering why do we uh, decide to come up here and use this form to propagate our agenda. Well, it's obvious that we can't run as the state house and pay our case, so we figured we'd start here on the municipal level. Um, I hope you indulge me. I have a letter, actually a letter from Stephanie Fletcher. Uh, by the way, she sent her uh, acknowledgments to Council Member Richard Kirk and Dustin and Council Member Rowan because you guys have been a talent strength for her. The letter says, she wrote this letter at 3 a.m. in the morning. It says, good morning, James. We were awakened a couple of hours ago by sounds of very large trucks outside the Alderson Hotel here in Port of Prince. It's unclear what's happening because it's impossible to see the streets from our location, and it sounds as though they are either stuck in mud or doing some type of major work. Thankfully, in the morning, there was no heavy rain for in, in, in Port of Prince yesterday. The main focus was on uh, search and rescue efforts due to the flood and mudslides from Monday's storm. I've been speaking with people in Port of Prince regarding the things most concerning to them as we enter the hurricane season. The main issues we share with the Haitian people are the absence of viable solutions addressing the cholera outbreaks, which is complicated, complicated by the mass homeless situation, especially in Port of Prince. There are several aspects of the recovery and the rebuilding efforts that many Haitian people feel are not being addressed adequately, if at all, which are provision of safe temporary housing, shelter during the hurricane season, long-term permanent housing solution, number three, adequate resources and access to those resources necessary to treat the cholera, and number four, the infrastructure, infrastructure establishment and rebuilding. The above mentioned concerns will not be immediately solved by a large government agencies, small NGOs, not not profits or government of Haiti and her people. However, these are issues that many organizations on the ground are concerned with because without practical viable solutions, we will continue to see the rise of cholera infection, injuries, and deaths. Directly related to the poor infrastructure combined with the lack of adequate temporary and long-term housing. We hear uh, we hear continued reports about recovery and rebuilding efforts in Haiti, and yet little has been done to even begin the monumental task of removing the rubble left by 2010 earthquake. Infrastructure, housing, and public health crisis have been long-term problems in Haiti for many years. We have a responsibility to the Haitian people to ensure agency responsible for planning and implementing shelter, housing, and infrastructure projects are held accountable to Haiti's newly elected president, government, and more importantly, I cannot express enough how much I appreciate the personal support of Councilwoman Patricia Perkins Augusti and Councilman Manny Bowen. It's because of your diligence that I honestly feel something will be done. And, and, and last but not least, the endless support from the People's Organization of Progress and its members who assist every week by purchasing oil rehydration salt and shipping it to Haiti. The ORS salt is a necessary therapy to treat and prevent deaths from dehydration.
Migration caused by cholera. However, it's important that you remember it is no different than placing a bandage on a bleeding artery and expecting the bleeding to stop. It's a temporary and non-viable long-term solution to one of Haiti's ongoing public health crises. The other main concern, which must be addressed, is an encounter for billions in aid pledged by governments around the world. Thank you tremendously, Nurse Stephanie Fletcher. And I was hoping that we could have uh, used this as a platform to convey uh, our pain and suffering for our brothers and people who are still suffering. And hopefully that you could use your legislative power to convey our pain to your congressional leaders. And I thank you for this time. Mr. Carey, thank you very, very much for your remarks. Very well received, thank you. Uh, I hope you indulge me. I have a letter, actual letter from Stephanie Fletcher. Uh, by the way, when she sends my acknowledgments to Councilman Grover, which is pretty productive, and Councilman Randy Grover, because you guys have been a talented strength runner. The letter says, she wrote this letter at 3 a.m. in the morning. It says, Good morning, James. We were waiting a couple of hours ago by sounds of very large trucks outside the Alderson Hotel here in Port au Prince. It's unclear what's happening because it's impossible to see the streets from our location and it sounds as though they are either stuck in mud or doing some type of major work at 3 in the morning. Thankfully, there was no heavy rainfall in, in Port au Prince yesterday. And the main focus was on uh, search and rescue efforts due to the flooding and mudslides from Monday storm. I was speaking with people in Port of Prince regarding the things most concerning to them as we enter the hurricane season. The main issue that we share with the Haitian people are access to viable solutions addressing the cholera outbreaks, which is complicated, complicated by the mass homeless situation, especially in Port of Prince. There are several aspects of the recovery and rebuilding efforts that many Haitian people feel are not being addressed adequately, if at all, which are provision of safe temporary housing shelter during hurricane season, long-term permanent housing solutions, number three, adequate resources and access to those resources necessary to treat the cholera. Number four, the infrastructure, infrastructure established by involved with some of the efforts in Haiti, but $13 billion would really be helpful. Um, and resolution tonight, just for those uh, who are here, um, will be uh, passed by the city council. It will then be forwarded up the ladder to our uh, legislative representatives at the federal level. And, and it's our hope that somebody will open their eyes at that level in Congress and the U.S. Senate to put some pressure on the World Bank uh, to get this money to be. Uh, obviously, there's problems in Haiti with the government. Um, money doesn't seem to get down to the people where they need it. And uh, we can't sit back and hold this money forever. Can't fix that problem uh, with the way the money is being spent. You know what? We're here right with you guys. We know that you guys are spending it the right way. And other organizations are doing it the right way. Um, because if it's just sitting there, it's not going So, um, Mr. Chairman, I thank you for allowing this resolution to be put on the agenda. Thank you very much, Councilman Keeping us aware of what we need to be aware of as a council in terms of. What happens to the people in Haiti affects us. And um, like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. So whatever happens over there is happening here to some degree. So I just want to thank uh, Mr. Carey. And I see um, uh, Mr. Stan Neron in the audience who has been working diligently on behalf of um, New Jersey for Haiti. And he knew when he got involved that it's going to be a long-term process. And I want to thank him for being committed. He said it's not going to be one year, two years. He knows it's going to be 50-year progress that we must stay diligent on this, on this issue. So I want to thank them for letting us, um, keeping us aware of the fact, and letting us take part in helping to make sure some justice comes to um, Haiti and its people. So I will be supporting the resolution in its entirety. And I'm hoping that not only that it go to our federal representative, that it will also be sent a copy to President um, Obama. And I will be following up with Congressman Payne's staff.
to see how we can continue to not let um, the light go out on this issue. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Councilman Nelson. And Mr. President, I, I think that I echo the wording of the Councilman Awaj and the First Ward Councilman. Uh, I was a victim of an earthquake in 1962. My family was in an earthquake in 1980. Still today, I have members of my family that after 31 years still waiting to get the money that was allocated by the government where my family comes from. Still, the rich are getting richer, but the poor that become poor. I hope it doesn't happen in Haiti because, you know, I do feel the crime because I lived. I want you to know that I donated to other agency, and the entire world felt for Haiti in order to help. So it's something very nice, Patricia and Mr. Grover, that we're doing this, and I hope that this money will release and it goes to the right people when it reaches port de prince or whatever the city in Haiti. Thank you, Councilman. Other comments? I'd also uh, like to echo the uh, comments of the audience when they uh, uh, single out Councilman Grove and, and Councilman Patricia Perkins and uh, when, when our council members do good work and it lifts the entire city council. So thank you for your, for your belief and your effort in this regard. Uh, no other comments? Uh, roll call, please. Councilwoman Perkins Agusti. Aye. Councilman Cuesta. Aye. Councilman Jackis. Aye. Councilman Grillo. Aye. Councilman Gonzalez. Aye. Councilman Savannah. Aye. Councilman Goldman. Aye. Councilman Nassim. Aye. President Keenan. Aye. I'll entertain a motion from Councilman Patricia Perkins Agusti. Hello. Um, I'm Charlene Mathis from Luke, New Jersey, and I just came from the City Council meeting here today at June 14, 2011 where the city council passed um, for them to investigate where the $32 million has gone um, in, the, in regards to Haiti. Um, Haiti is um, from Haiti. I'm, Haiti, I'm from Haiti, I'm Haitian, and I have family in Haiti who were devastated and affected by the recent earthquake that happened, and um, I'm glad that we were able to pass this, and I hope that they are able to do something about what's going on in Haiti right now. Okay. Well, the city council meeting was, was all right. Um, they passed the resolution for the Haiti meeting. But let's hope that when it hits the federal, somebody does something about it. Or if it goes to Obama's hand, something is done about it. These people in Haiti need help. And not just, just regular help, they need immediate help like right now. These people are suffering. They live in tents. America does not allow their people to live in tents. And we're all over here.